Are you boys ready? Uh, have a good look. Have a good look at uh, Benito here. He's gonna change his hat. Boom! And Benito has a new hat. But first, if you like these videos, leave a like, consider subscribing for more of them, and hit me up in the comments with what you want to see next. Now, on to the video. Hey folks, Bitter Steel here, back with another video for Hearts of Iron 4. Now today we'll be trying something a little different from our usual achievement videos. Instead, we'll try a little bit of a challenge. Playing as Italy, we will try to realize incompetent Benito's ultimate goal of spreading his love of pasta to the rest of the world. Or, as a lesser goal, restoring the Roman Empire. That's right, boys. We're going for realize Roman ambitions. Uh. Now, to realize our Roman ambitions, we need quite a bit of land. Let's have a look. Okay, so the only challenge I see here would be France and the UK. Those would be the only two majors involved in this. So that's not terrible. We can take those, no sweat. Let's prepare for our glorious rise to greatness. This time, I've done a bit of the setup off camera. It's a lot of clicking anyway, so I figured I'd spare you. Let me know in the comments if you like this way of doing things or if you prefer for me to do it while on screen. It's, it's just a bit easier this way as well, I guess. First order of business, we will be bypassing Ethiopian war logistics. The focus isn't very good anyways. Now to do this, I have released our East African holdings as puppets. The next in-game day to take by will cause the focus to be bypassed. Now this has the added bonus of no longer having to worry about resistance in the area. And we can ask them for manpower. So after Ethiopian war logistics are bypassed, we will be going for industrial effort 1, industrial effort 2, the extra research slot and army primacy. Beyond those, you can really pick whatever you like. It doesn't really matter. Overall, the tree isn't very good anyway. It could even be beneficial to just not pick any focus and just break in the PP instead. Next up, organizing the military. I've organized it in uh, three armies, a large northern battle group, which will strike south, a smaller southern battle group, which will fight its way to the north, and then we've put all the mobile units, si, our tanks and cavalry, under the capable command of Giovanni Messe. These will be our units used in breakthroughs and for creating encirclements. We'll just send all of these guys down to Ethiopia. We don't need them. The local forces in the area are more than enough to conclude the conflict, but this way we can easily farm some much needed army experience and some pretty great general traits. We'll just assign some battle plans and let them run. They'll handle it without issue. Just make sure to rein them in every now and then, just to ensure you get enough army experience out of this. We'll need about 80-ish to be able to make our templates less terrible because oh boy we have some true garbage templates here let's see the infantry this is this is 12 combat with infantry not 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 all that spectacular and uh, the armor yeah that's that's hardly an armored division now is it just just one tank in there so we'll desperately need to change these. As for the Navy, I've uh, assigned the Navy in two groups, really. We have a surface fleet consisting of two battle groups. We can dock these in the port in Piedmont or Genoa. Doesn't really matter, just put them in a port somewhere. And then we have our submarine units. We'll group these up as well. They can also sit in port for now. We'll use these later on. Now on to research. There's nothing fancy going on here. It's just the basic industry and electronic mechanical engineering research. Basically keep up to date with these as the game progresses. One thing to note though is to get paratroopers early. That's right. We are going to be cheesing paratroopers to deal with our early game enemies. And one more thing to keep in mind is that you might want to get um, the 1936 fighter once a little bit earlier. We still don't have them and air is still king in this game so you might want some good fighters. And consider changing from Grand Battle Plan to Superior Firepower. I really dislike Grand Battle Plan personally. I prefer to roll with Superior Firepower but that's your choice. I'm not gonna make that for you. Now on to production. We'll start out with about two factories on transport planes. We'll keep this going until we have about five in storage. After that we'll simply scrap the line. We'll follow up with some factories and light tanks for for now. These will be used extensively as our breakthrough troops so we'll need a healthy number of tanks. 
and we'll combine this with about two factories of motorized that we can later increase to three or four as factories come online. Then we have a line of five factories for infantry equipment. Also, we'll be expanding this later on as we need it. Roughly three, three-ish on support equipment. Again, expand that whenever feasible. Don't forget about artillery. We'll start out with one and get more along the way. We'll use these mostly as support companies at first. We might change that later as the game progresses and we end up with a good stockpile. And finally, we'll put one factory on fighters and one factory on close air support. Air is still king. And as with everything else, adjust these numbers as the game progresses. As for our naval production, Italy starts with a lot of ships in the queue. Just trash all of them, except for the nearly finished ships and the submarines. We'll finish the ships that are almost done and keep producing submarines because, well, submarines are great and they'll be able to achieve naval superiority without really being at risk of getting blown to bits. As for construction, we'll simply plop down some civilian factories in the provinces of Tuscany and Latium. That's the area around Rome. Keep building these until halfway into 1937. After that, we'll follow up with military factories, maybe some infrastructure. It's probably going to be mostly mills anyway. And then last but not least, espionage. I sure love myself some espionage, so we'll get ourselves an agency right off the bat. And with all that out of the way, we can increase the speed and start things off. Now, our first target here will be France. Once we have 47 political power in the bank, will immediately start justifying on the French so we can take them out without allied interference. Sure, they have a much larger army than us and they have a quite powerful navy, but they barely have manpower and their industry really can't keep up. Especially if what I have in mind here plays out as intended. But stay tuned to find out. A few moments later. Now with espionage agency set up, we'll immediately go for their more powerful benefits in the form of the cryptology department. I really like using this. Et voila, we have 47 PP or political power. That's just enough to justify on the French. It doesn't really matter what we take. We'll take Savoy for some historical reasons. Now let's see here. In 235 days, we will be knocking on France's door. So by then we will have to conclude our conflict in Ethiopia, reorganize the military and uh, strengthen our supplies somewhat because I don't think we have a lot of stuff. Well, it, it's looking fairly okay now, but trust me, once we start upgrading our divisions, this is going to be very red. So we, we have our work cut out, but uh, I'm quite sure we can manage. Three days later. And that concludes our Ethiopian conflict. Two options here. One is to simply annex Ethiopia. Uh, I don't like doing that. Sure, it looks nice on a map, but what does it really get us? It's more territory that we need to police. It's going to involve garrisoning the area. It's just going to be overrun by the British or whoever decides to walk in if it ever comes to blows, while it would be much more beneficial if we simply puppet them. We won't have to garrison the area, we can steal their manpower, and they make divisions that we can uh, request if we would uh, need some reinforcements. Which only has one downside, air quotes, we bypass the Triumph in Africa focus, so we lose out on 10 stability and 10 war support. It's nothing insurmountable, really. We can get those by spending our PP in other places. And with that conflict out of the way, we have a healthy amount of army experience. 85, that's pretty decent. So let's look at our templates. First off, the infantry template. Divisione di Fanteria. 12 combat with. Not great. How about we make it 20 combat with? So for 20 army experience, we can turn this into a competent defensive division. And well, let's be honest, against the AI, you can even use this as an offensive division. This is going to be our infantry fodder. And for good measure, we're going to throw on some support artillery just to give them a little bit of soft attack as well. Now to deal with our tank divisions. This is more a cavalry division than anything else, really. Let's start by getting rid of these horses. We are going to fully motorize these. Okay, so even when we fully motorize these, they're still not great. It's a very light on tanks. Let's, uh, let's uh, solve that, shall we? Okay, so now it's 20 combat width, but uh, still a bit light on breakthrough and armor. Our industry isn't super powerful, 
but I think we can get away with adding a few more tanks to this. And this is what we end up with. It's got decent organization, it's got decent breakthrough and armor. Yes, these are light tanks, so the speed is still really good at 10 kilometers an hour. We can build on this as more experience rolls in and our industry becomes more robust. We can turn this into a 40 width tank division. We can't supply one right now, but uh, these 20 width divisions will still be good. And uh, let's also change the name here. This isn't the cavalry regiment anymore. No, no, no. These boys are armored now. It's also time for uh, some reorganizing of the military. Man, man. Now, ideally, I want Sebastiano here, the man with the funny hat, to sit on the French border. Why? Well, he's an inflexible strategist, giving us a good defensive bonus. And he's a mountaineer, giving us another good defensive bonus. While the other guy eh, didn't really pick up all that many great traits. We can use him for the offensive operations. So we'll park this army on the French border. Now, it doesn't need 24 divisions. That will be overkill. 15 divisions will do just fine for holding this border. The other 19 can sit on a port, either Genoa or La Spezia, doesn't matter. We'll send our uh, armored divisions, yes, these, these will all be armored divisions, and we'll park them on Genoa, and they can have a naval invasion order started towards Marseille, behind the French lines. I think you see where I'm going with this, right? And we'll reinforce that with another naval invasion, or five infantry divisions. They can launch from La Spezia and land in Toulon. Is, is the plan getting to you, boys? Is it? Well, let's, uh, let's clarify it for those who aren't following along. The plan here is to land with armor in Marseille and make a rush north. Meanwhile, the infantry will land in Toulon, and follow behind to reinforce the line that the uh, tanks are pushing north. At the same time, or maybe a little bit after the naval landings, because naval landings can be delayed if the French fleet shows up, airborne operations will launch and land, hopefully, all the way from the Swiss border down towards about two, maybe three provinces away from the shore. The plan here will be to then link up that naval invasion with the paratroopers, cutting off the French army that's sitting on our border. They would only have access to supplies from the port of Nice. That would not be enough to supply all those divisions. And once the infantry army is in position and has taken over from the paratroopers, we can use the armor to push into Nice and cut them off completely. Then once we close that pocket, that's a devastating blow to the French military. We start rolling everything north and we should have virtually no problems walking into France. So see how that plays out. We will also be converting all of these infantry armies, both the one on the border and the one making the naval invasions, into our Divisione de Fanteria, the division we changed. And with paratroopers researched, we'll train, uh, seven will do, train them, put them on the airport here, one run, and on a high equipment priority, and just spam them out the moment they become available. Now, as you can tell, we are sorely lacking in equipment. We have a few months left before we start this uh, messy business with the French. But even so, we have a much more robust industry than the French. We'll come out ahead in this conflict, especially if we can uh, manage our operations that we have planned. Later. And our first batch of 150 PP can be spent wisely on the war economy. Now for future PP investments, I consider free trade to be a good option. We can get a lot of these things, uh, a lot of these resources from puppets. Yes, I intend to create a lot of puppets, especially from territory not required to form room. And other good investments are, as usual, the military. Now these paratroopers can be assigned to the uh, Alpine army after they have successfully, hopefully successfully concluded their airdrop and we've established some good lines we can convert them into infantry divisions as well. They're a bit more um, robust at holding those lines. But we need them in their paratrooper capacity just now. So as for the paradrop orders themselves, this should be decent. Dropping along this uh, large river gives them a good defensive bonus from any other French divisions that will be rushing in from inland. They're close enough to the shore that my armor is capable of quickly pushing north and linking up. And they're dropping quite heavily in the northern sections because that's uh, that tends to be where France is moving some troops around and power drops could become contested. 
So we want to have some options there if one of them or maybe two of them don't go quite as planned. One hour later. Very well, we have finished our justification for conquering Savoy. But I think our equipment stores are still a little bit on the low side. So I think we'll keep the war goal, but won't declare until the tail end of it. So we have a couple more weeks to prepare and get some more supplies in. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. And also get the fleet in position. I think I'll also research military police. We'll be occupying quite a bit of land in the future. Don't, don't want those uh, uprisings. Okay, so we're out of time. We have to take this war goal and see where we end up. We're still quite under equipped, but uh, let's fire things off and see what happens, shall we? And as expected, the French will start throwing themselves at our Alpine front. We should be able to bleed them here quite well. Three weeks later. Okay, it's been a month. The French have lost 21,000 men. We've lost 158. So, um, good job, France. You're bleeding yourself dry of both manpower and equipment because you, you barely have factories and um, you, you can't upgrade your recruitment laws because I have so much fewer divisions than you. So, let's keep this rolling for a bit before we make our actual invasion. I want to see some smaller yellow bars here. Many months later. Okay, we've gone through two months of these um, border shenanigans. Let's put the plan in motion. We launch our naval invasions. The navy will escort. Once the troops have landed, we'll pull the navy back and just leave a few ships out there for convoy escorts. So we'll actually get supply there. Once we hit the ports, we will send up our aircraft and we power drop. Now you can see the French army here is responding. Their units are starting to move all over the place. We don't want that. We want them to stay put right where they are. So we'll launch a small offensive along this Alpine front. It doesn't have to take any territory. We just want to do this to keep them from responding. So we just pin all these units down while the pair drop is going on. And the pair drop has been successful. Let's clean up these lines. Okay, so it seems this, uh, this little operation of ours was quite successful. We've cut off a large section of the French military. Now we just need to make a concentrated push on the port of Nice, destroy this pretty big pocket and then start pushing into France proper.
Now the Italians don't have a vast array of chiefs of army to pick. I think the army maneuver guy is our best bet here, 5% division speed. It matches very well with our playstyle here with using these uh, light tanks to break through and encircle. So it's my advice here to go with the army maneuver. Okay, so we're in May now. French casualties have been devastating. And you can quite clearly see they're no longer managing to uh, replenish their divisions. And they're probably running out of equipment. Which is unsurprising considering they only have 10 military factories. So uh, this one's almost in the back. Just gotta clean up this last little pocket here and we can start our push. Now with resistance to occupation rising, a good time to have a look at our occupation template. Which are we using? We're using the cavalrys. Uh, Regimento de Cavalleria. Let's uh, change that up a little bit. This is woefully under-equipped for some uh, occupation. For the purpose of occupation, this is the template you're going to want. Just completely filled out with cavalry and a military police attachment. As the game progresses and your industry improves, consider systematically swapping out cavalry for armored cars, but this is a good place to start. Okay, the French are very close towards capitulation. Let's set up the next phase. What we're going to do now is justify a war goal on Yugoslavia. Any will do. This will take 30 days and it's going to cause the British to guarantee their independence because our will tension is so high. That's perfectly fine because Britain is going to be our next target. There we go, the fall of Paris and the French have capitulated. We still got some stuff from them. We need the mainland French territory and we need French North Africa and French Syria. So these are roughly the territories we need to control directly. This is the stuff we'll annex. Anything else? I just want to satellite. 
This gives us a ton of puppets. And finally, we want to puppet whatever is left of the French. This will give us access to their fleet and tremendous power at sea, especially if we can combine this with the um, English fleet, which hopefully we'll be adding to our uh, fine collection later. Now, for the next phase of our plan, we will be declaring war on Yugoslavia in eh, roughly 28 days now. If we give it a little bit of time, the British will be guaranteeing the independence of Yugoslavia. Once they do, we declare war on Yugoslavia, Britain gets pulled in. Once Britain gets pulled in, we naval invade. We hit them hard in the south and start pushing north, encircle their army, destroy it, and keep pushing north towards this line between the cities of Liverpool and Hull. Once we capture everything up to here, Britain will collapse and capitulate. While we're doing that we're going to use the fact that we're a fascist nation at war with a major to get some very quick justifications in specifically we're going to quickly justify a war goal on Austria and declare war on them pulling them into the war and into the faction and we're also if there's time do the same with Belgium now these um, small wars with these miners we don't have to occupy any of the territory we just have to fight them a little bit so they have some casualties and they can be included in the peace deal. Then we'll push north, eliminate United Kingdom, and cause the total collapse of the Allies faction, and we'll go to a peace deal where we can take whatever we want from every country we were at war with and had actual combat with. So, let's move on. Many months later. Okay, I think that's been enough recovering. It's time to take the war to Britain. So we'll declare war on Yugoslavia. Now let's get this ball rolling. Now, as our naval invasions are well on their way, let's also uh, call on our good friends, the French. They still have a sizable navy that we'd like to get involved, so uh, let's issue a call to arms. Make sure our own navy is uh, doing its job of supporting the invasion. Now, let's also make sure our own navy is doing its job of supporting the naval invasion. Let's get the air force to help out. Good. Now, for this part of the conflict, we'll just hold the defensive line here. We'll just let the Yugoslavs and in the future the Austrians throw themselves at our lines so we can cause some casualties, get war participation against them and draw them into the conflict that way it doesn't matter that we don't completely occupy their country by the time we knock Britain out they'll still be involved in the peace deal if they have at least some war participation against us let's uh, justify a goal on the Austrians to get them involved only takes 25 days pretty great being a fascist nation at war with a major uh, let's take the speed down and make sure we uh, we deal with Britain Now this may be getting a little greedy, but I also want to see if we can't get the Belgians involved. So I'm just going to justify a war goal on them. And in 10 days, we can also pull them in. I'm not sure if we can divert enough troops there to make a decent impact, but I want to give it a try. Okay, so England's pretty much done here. We're almost where we need to be. They're still mustering some resistance, but I don't think this is going to be um, 
meaningful. We've got the Austrians and the Yugoslavs pretty well bottled up. Sure, they're putting all the pressure on our lines, but uh, they won't be able to do any meaningful damage before we knock the UK out. And I am still considering trying to get the Belgians involved here. It does seem worth it. Just gotta get our armor in position and uh, let's see if, it, if it's something we can do. Oh dear, that's not good. Oh boy. Um, no, I think we can still make it. <laughs> we knocked them out. Our encircled army managed to knock them out. Great. Well, that's Belgian done. Now this may be me just getting a little bit greedy, but why not add just another head to the pile? While we're here, 15 days. Yeah, we have 15 days. Okay, six days until we get that war goal. I think I'm just gonna delay the English army, or rather the army in the UK, get the Luxembourgians involved, and then finish this off. There we go, we have our peace deal here. Some guns from the UK, always nice. Now, first things first, we'll take all the territory that we need directly. Okay, so that's the territory we need to own directly. What else can we do? We can satellite the Raj and British Malaya, seems like a no-brainer. Now, what I like to do is just satellite everything they have in Africa and just scatter that throughout the world. And then we'll just uh, puppet whatever's left of the UK. We, we don't need to control the islands. And for Belgium, well, we'll also satellite their African holdings. So, so far, we're well on our way, wouldn't you agree? There's no real meaningful opposition left to us. And for our next stage, we'll justify a war goal on the Netherlands. Now, what this justification will do is to cause whoever's left in the Allies, I think it's uh, Canada that they left in charge, to start guaranteeing the independence of these democratic countries which is fine with us. Canada is a, a walkover. We'll do what we just did to Britain, only to Canada this time. And while we're doing that, we'll just justify on every individual country we need and just consume them piecemeal. While that's going on, let's just send uh, the smaller of our two armies over to Newfoundland or Labrador. <laughs> just draw an offensive line towards the other side of Canada. We'll have to walk all the way over to Vancouver. By just using the regular foot infantry, it will take a while, but that's okay. That just gives us more time to justify on other countries and draw them in. You might want to upgrade the naval base and the infrastructure here though. Meanwhile, our larger armies will be put in positions to quickly overrun these other countries that we have our sights set on one by one, which will be the Netherlands first. And then we can turn to other countries like Switzerland, Greece, Bulgaria, Romania, Hungary. We can gobble all of these up. They will join the allies being non-aligned or um, some of them even democratic. And then when Spain gets around to finishing its civil war, we'll knock the nationalists out, provided they'll win. They'll usually win if it's unhistorical. And in that one last major war, we'll pretty much take everything we need. That's it. Now one focus we do want to take here is the Albanian occupation. You can bypass claims of Yugoslavia at this point because, well, we own Yugoslavia. So let's just do the Albanian occupation, 70 days, and we'll just get the country for free. Six hours later. And with our justification done, it's time for another round of beat on the allies. Every country that we still need, we can take in this war. So with the Netherlands in the allies now, we're at war with the major. We can just uh, start gobbling up more of them. Next stop, Kingdom of Hungary, 15 days. So while we're trundling across Europe and uh, adding ever more more countries to our collection. Don't be afraid to keep recruiting. We'll, we'll need quite a few units and after um, incorporating the stockpile of all these countries that we've um, annexed so far, we'll be able to put out quite a few more units. 12 seconds later. And that's the Netherlands out. Who is our next target? Right, Hungary. Just line, line everyone up on the Hungarian border. And, and, and just walk in there. Well, justification's ready. Well, you know what that means for Hungary. We can immediately pick our next target. I think Bulgaria. 
It's quite soft and juicy. A few moments later. And Hungary took no time at all falling apart. Just So just keep lining your army up on their borders and, and just walk in. These minor nations have nothing to stop you. And the only thing that qualifies as a major in this war? Canada? Yeah. Yeah, no. Oh, speaking of Canada, why not call in the UK? <laughs> so we can actually start some fighting on this front as well. The small army we have in, in um, what's this, Norfolk? Labrador? Will be more than enough to just slowly walk from the eastern side of Canada all the way to the west. And in that time, we just conquer Europe as they join the Allies one by one. And, well, goodbye Bulgaria. What's a good target? Iraq, yes. Let's let's justify it on Iraq next. We need a few more troops before we take on Greece. Uh, they have a quite a long border, and we also have to contend with Romania at the same time. Bye-bye, Bulgaria. Uh, justification on Iraq's done. Mm, let's not deal with Greece just yet. Let's get the, uh, the Swiss involved first. Never stood a chance. Uh, we can take out Switzerland now as well, and we'll justify on Greece. I think we could take the nationalists once they've won their civil war, and then it's just Portugal on the chopping block. Oh, uh, of course, Greece. Uh, well, quite a few more countries, actually. As the Iraqis out of the picture. Goodbye, Switzerland. These wars involve very little besides um, lining up your troops and sending them to war. Okay, justification on Greece is done. Let's line up the troops and we'll be able to take out Greece and Romania in one go. Who to justify on next? Maybe, yes, Turkey. Let's justify on Turkey next. We're declaring war on Greece. Not gonna push into Greece right away. It's a bit mountainous terrain. I'll finish off the, um, the Romanians first. Ah, justification on the Turks is done as well. I don't think I'll declare that war just yet. Might be getting in over my head if I do that. Just finish off Romania first. And Romania is out of the picture. Focus everything on the Greeks now. Well, I'll send my... Uh my tanks across and prepare to take on the Turks. Gotta make sure we don't let this war goal expire. Okay, the war goal expires tomorrow, so we'll just declare war now. Cut Turkey in half. Half of their army is on a side with no port, so that's a good pocket to close. And meanwhile, Greece is uh, well, putting up fairly stiff resistance. They are mountainous, after all. Doesn't matter. Okay, so that's Turkey out. Meanwhile, Greece is still putting up a fight, but they're on their last legs. Now to prepare everyone to take out the nationalists. Spain may look large, but this shortly after their civil war, they really don't have anything to uh, to stop you. A few inches later. And time for Spain to go bye bye. Okay, Spain's pretty much rolled up, so that leaves Portugal. Yes, Portugal. You're next, boys. Now to consume Portugal, and I think we'll be done once Canada falls. 
as Portugal dealt with in seconds. All right, so we've knocked out everyone in Europe that we uh, needed to deal with. So now it's just plucky little Canada that we need to um, make see reason and we're done here. So I'm just gonna speed this up. Eventually. There we go, Canada finally decided to just Give up. So let's have a look at our peace deal. You can take all of the Netherlands. We can take all of Spain. Don't forget to take their North African holdings and this little port here. We can take Portugal. Completely annex Hungary. We'll completely annex Bulgaria. We'll completely annex Iraq. The Swiss. The Greeks. The Romanians. The Turks. We'll puppet Canada. Don't need to occupy the land. That would conclude the peace deal. We've taken all the provinces we need. We've got a very large amount of puppets. And uh, let's see if we can click that button. Realize Roman ambitions. Well, are you boys ready? Uh, have a good look. Have a good look at uh, Benito here. He's gonna change his hat. Boom! We're now a nice red color, Imperium Romanum. And Benito has a new hat. That's why we did it, boys, for the hat. There we go, folks. We've done it. We've restored the Roman Empire and given Benito his glorious hat. If you like this video, leave a like. Hit me up in the comments with more challenges for me or achievements you wanna see me try. If you didn't like it, that's fine. Just hit that dislike button and tell me what I did wrong. I'm always looking to learn and improve. And I hope you will consider subscribing for more of this content. This has been me, Bittersteel. Have a good one.